Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the political divide between the Magic the Gathering community and how it's different today than it was when I first started 20 plus years ago. Now, when I first started, we I was a lot younger, and most Magic players were probably my age, maybe a tiny bit older. There wasn't a big political divide because it was the internet age. We had AOL Instant Messenger. It was a lot of fun. I used to join these uh, group chats where we would play Survivor, and it was just, like, ridiculous. I don't even know. There was a website, and I won Survivor AOL Instant Messenger Chat Championship. As, like, an eight-year-old or something who <laughs> didn't know what was going on. But it was a different age, and there was an age where people literally respected each other much more. And their opinions were not as divided. Yeah, we went from George Bush to the Clintons, back to the Bushes. Politically, it was the same, more or less the same. Now, when we see what happened today, today a lot of people have student loans. A lot of people supported Bernie Sanders, which is a very different candidate from Donald Trump. I would say Hillary is somewhere in the middle in the political spectrum. I mean, she is a Clinton. So we have a interesting scenario in our own community today where Wizard of Coast started leaning left. It had not done so when I was playing Magic, even when I was in college or in law school, it wasn't left-leaning. It was just a gaming company that didn't take political stances. Now it takes political stances anytime it can. And even to the point, some of what they're saying or what their official, some of the people who represent them are very left-leaning, like really to the left. And anything that offends them offend Wizards of the Coast because they will use their power to get you banned for life, to get you banned. And Wizards of the Coast, instead of promoting both sides, they promote only the left-leaning side. Uh, they are located in Seattle, and Seattle does tend to be much more left-leaning than where I live in Texas. So... The great, great divide is the Bernie Sanders versus Donald Trump argument, and it comes down to politics. Much in today's American life comes down to politics. So one argument you have, hey, you should own a business, you should work hard, you should make money, and you should save. You should not rely on government handouts, you should not rely on bankruptcy, you should, not rely, you should just do the best job you can and quote, best job you can. And I agree, as I get older, uh, I agree with many of these principles because I, one of the toughest things I have to do is, and the most enjoyable, is I have to pay people's payroll. People, all my employees and all my workers and all my vendors, they get paid before I get paid. So I'm always one month, I always have to have one month if not 90 days in escrow. There's people who create jobs and there's people who ask for donations. So on the other side, you have uh, people who want student loan forgiveness, which I agree with that principle, actually. I paid, you can go on the Inc. article. I went to one of the most expensive colleges in a very expensive law school. I paid off all my student loans, all of them, every single cent. But I understand many of my friends, especially those who went to NYU, they're struggling. Uh, they are struggling. So, yeah, I mean, it sucks for me that I did what I needed to do, that I worked free jobs to pay off my student loans. While other people may not have worked as hard, but I feel like for the economy's sake, you can't have people with... I have a friend, he owes Citibank $200,000 from NYU. He's making... What's it called? A job related? It's like a percentage of what you earn at your job. But he's making less than forty thousand dollars at his job, and he has two hundred thousand. So that two hundred thousand is never going to get paid. 
And that's where I think Tolarian Wedge lie, is they lie towards this, you know, donation, help me uh, society where, you know, college is free, healthcare is free, that people can, you know, do whatever they feel like. And if they're injured, then somebody will take care of it. That's not them. Uh, they can live at their parents' home in the parents' basement, and that's totally cool. So as a millennial, I'm about, I'm older than Wedge, and I'm younger than Unsleeved Media. So I'm right in the same, around the same age group. I can see both ways. A lot of my friends owe a lot of student loans. And that's the primary reason I'm not married is because if I marry any of my really close friends, I'm going to be screwed because I don't have any loans and I have equity on a home and I own lots of assets. So, you know, as soon as I get married, all those assets are gone because they go into the student loans, right? Uh, that debt becomes my debt. And that's very scary to me because I know how hard I worked. I worked 100 plus hours a week. Uh, I worked uh, three different jobs uh, when I first graduated from law school because I we're talking about a huge sum of loans. And that's where we have a divide. We have a divide on people who have worked hard and paid off their loans and then people who want their loans forgiven completely. I think it's somewhere in the middle. Uh, I think it's somewhere in the middle. That like, hey, you gave it your best try. If you can show that you gave it your best try, then yeah, and you couldn't do it, then you sh your loan should be forgiven. But if you're lazy and you're just asking for donations, then you know you should try harder. And once you try harder then, and you still can't do it, then maybe someone can help you. So the problem I have with these donations and all this stuff, it, it's not sustainable. So if you take the core issues of how much money does this community have to donate to certain individuals, it can't, then that number doesn't go up drastically every year. And that number, it can only decline. We are playing a physical card game right now. I know Magic Arena, I know Magic Online, but those don't, those two are not competitive against Hearthstone. They're just not. They're not competitive against Pokemon. I play Pokemon. The system works fine. There's no bugs. There's no errors. It's relatively cheap and it's, you know, it's all the point, all the, all those things that make Wizard of the Coast uh, such a bad manager of digital property. Hearthstone is solely a digital property. They don't have those problems. Hearthstone is much bigger. And any equity and any advantage that Wizard of the Coast had by being first to market is completely gone online. So if you're expecting the Magic the Gathering pool of uh, donations to increase in time, I don't think it's going to do that. I think if you look at Mana Source's Patreon, you look at uh, Tolerance Patreon, they have gone down from their peaks. The peak period is over. So I don't think that model, you know what model is very sustainable? Start a company, hire some of your friends, hope you guys make it, and work hard. Uh, everyone works hard. Everyone on my team works weekends. We work Saturdays and Sundays. It's not that I make them. It's because we have so much to do. And everyone knows that, hey, because we got this client, we make this much money. That means we can go out and do X, Y, Z. That means that people will get Christmas bonuses. That means people will get birthdays off. And that means people can pay for their uh, children's daycares, their dog sitter. So that's how I think I view empowering people is give them the opportunity to impress you. Give them the opportunity to show a good job. The same can be said about my hiring. My hiring is terrible and I have uh, allowed my CTO to take control of my hiring because it's been so bad. But a gas station cashier, a single mom, you know, pretty much a teenager like that was pretending to be like 29. And she looked like she was 29 too. I was like, oh, wait, are you like 20? 
<laughs> all these people need opportunities. Um, Amy, Amy's my, and see, see what's on this channel. She's very successful now. A huge, a widely successful story. She was 27. She had um, personal issues with her family. She was living at home. She had free associate degrees. So she was in school since she was 18 to 27. Lots of student loans. And the associate degrees were in pre-med, fine arts, and graphic design. I taught her something called PPC. And now she's really good at it. Um, and she's, uh, I saw her speak a month ago and I was like, wow, that's, that's pretty crazy. So my belief is you empower them and then they can empower other people. That's my core belief. Anyway, bye guys.